Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Car Mechanic Simulator 2018. Today we're going to be doing a full rebuild and a full restoration of this, I can't remember the name of this car, DC Typhoon, also known as the Shelby or AC Cobra. This is one of my favourite cars in the world and uh, we're going to do the full restoration today, so this is going to be kind of edited up a bit. Let's start by disassembling the body and just making sure that everything is... Uh, there to begin with. Door, window, window, no window there. Mirror, mirror, hood. I think, for the most part, I think that is in fact the entire body disassembled. You can see that I've already got it on the, uh, on the, oops. Just like the interior disassemble mode, because if you move the mouse just the wrong way, it'll randomly cut off. Good for that, though. Um, do I want to do a detail bit? Yeah, let's detail the interior. Um, I need to find the right piece of equipment. That's a battery charger. Interior detailing toolkit. You can go to Cardifter A. We'll detail the interior straight off. Let's use that. Hundred dollars to get the interior looking all nice and beautiful. I don't want it lifted. Oh, okay. Let's go <laughs> repair the body panels. Um, if anything does need repairing, let's just. Okay, let's repair all the random stuff that we got here. Because apparently I've got a lot of random junk here. Oh yeah, I was. Um. Yeah, let's just repair what we can here. Uh, I'll be back with you once everything's repaired and we'll see what we've got for the car after that. Alright, everything has been repaired and... Uh... Oh yeah, I'm standing under the lift. Oops. <laughs> let's bring the lift down. Uh, I'm going to move the welder over here as well. So we have a, a lot of cluster over here. Can I move this back? I can't place the welder welder back. That's I don't know if that's supposed to be happening or what. Let's just get the body repaired up fully so that it's all nice and beautiful. So we'll start disassembling the engine. I think I missed the, I missed the headlights. Well, it might have fixed the headlights up. I don't think you can buy them anyway, so let's start by getting rid of the engine. Taking that out and we can repair all that up afterwards. I'm going to try and get the whole thing done today. So there'll be a few cuts and jumps. There's the brake servo, the carb, the intake manifold. I took out, uh, that was the ignition wires just coming out there. Uh, ignition, oh, clip B. And the other clip B. Clip B. Uh, the rad fan can come off as well as, actually. I'm going to jump around bits of the engine. And get it fully off. Distributor, water pump pulley, the water pump can come off. Now I got everything running as fast as you can in the game. I'm, I've got all the, I think all the mechanics tools are upgraded, but there's still bits of the workshop that aren't, and like some bonuses yet to get. I'm level 37, um, which actually gets you pretty much the entire game unlocked, which uh, is very nice indeed. You can hear. I'm probably going to turn it down in the video, but I've got the radio on so I can have something to listen to. Maybe not my favourite music, but uh, quite good nonetheless. I think it's Mixer Radio I'm listening to today. And yeah, I'm going <laughs> to skip through these rocker arms fairly quickly. So let's uh, give you guys a bit of a, a speed up, I think. And I'll take out, actually I'll, yeah, I'll skip through the rocker arms and the, uh, the push rods. Because you guys know how they come out. It's the same kind of engine as we pulled out last time. 
Bail overhead cam. Overhead valve, overhead valve, not overhead cam. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Push rods and stuff out. Spark plugs can come out now. We'll take off the exhaust manifold in a second. Four. Over to this side. These spark plugs look to be in good enough condition. Um, I'm hoping that I'll be able to make use of that. So the exhaust manifold's got to come off now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bolts for that. You can take off the engine head on this side. And uh, I probably should have taken the battery out a while back. And over this side, the exhaust manifold's got to come off as well. So we're we'll pulling the exhaust system apart once this top of the engine is done. Seven, eight. And also from the top. Oh no, the V8 starter is now accessible from the underneath of the car, which is good. Anything else accessible from the top end? No. So we'll raise the car up on the lifter. It's over here, Dave. We'll raise it up to the skies. We'll start disassembling. Oh, there's no oil pan on this car. The bottom end of the engine as well. Just include the gearbox and the drive shaft and the starter motor. Let's see if we can get in here to grab these four. There we go. Gearbox can come off now. And I'm going to try and repair as much of this as possible because that's where the, uh, the profit's going to lie. We're going to get this all 100%. Um, everything that goes in will be 100% status. Um, I'm not going to deal with anything in the 90s. It'll be 100 or bust. This car, I think, is a bit too good to be dealing with even 99% um, condition parts. It's, you know, it's a performance car. And I'm going to, if I can, try and supercharge it. I don't know if it'll let me. Because the game at present, for some reason, there's a... V8 supercharger, but there's no cars that seem to take it. Um, like I c it'll it'll fit on the V8 overhead cam engine. It's the same shape and size as the air intake, but it just won't work. Okay, so that's all I can do engine wise. Let's take the exhaust out. Start disassembling the. Tires. So I'm actually going to replace the uh, rims with slightly larger rims, but I might make this a bit of a squat car. Seeing as it was pointed out to me in a previous video that I can in fact do that, I was just being an idiot and trying to attach the wrong or mismatched um, tires. So we'll just do quick assembly and I'm going to skip through this super quick because you've seen me disassemble it in. Uh, the suspensions before, for sure. I know you guys are just here to watch the car coming together, so we'll just kind of... I don't want the engine block, I want the double wishbone. Shock, which means I can now take off the bottom arm of suspension. Three bolts there. Steering up will come off. That looked in good condition, 95%. The veins of my existence, the rubber bushings can come off now. And uh, while I disassemble the other side of the front suspension, I'm going to just do a bit, bit of a time skip. Just to save you guys a bit of bother. Alright, that's both sides of the suspension on the front disassembled. I'm not going to start reassembling until we got everything apart. Um, but it shouldn't take too much longer, it's just the rear suspension we need to worry about. Forgot the inner tie rod. Um, it's just going to be the kind of the rear suspension and then the top end of the remainder of the engine. I can take off the oil filter. That's going to be dumped. We'll take out the fuel tank and fuel filter now. Or fuel pump even. And now we can start disassembling the rear suspension. We're going to just do this as much as you can under the car first. 
and we'll take off the wheel and disassemble the axle so we can disassemble the suspension independently which is nice it's a leaf spring suspension with a shock absorber and now we gotta take off the rims I know I'm not I'm doing that right but the game will let me so I'm gonna do it like that drum wheel cylinder solid axle uh, the hub and that's as far as I can get on this side so oh wait no the knuckle housing that's as far as I can get so I'll just once again give you a bit of a skip ahead while we disassemble this side of the suspension and the rear drive axle can come out as well so that's 90% of the car now apart just lower it down so we can take out pistons and piston rings then we can get to the repairs which I know I'm skipping off a lot but I think um, streamlining this a bit so that you guys get to see the bits that you want and you don't have to watch me do the same things you know doubling up because you know both sides of the car are put together the same way um, especially when I'm just disassembling it it's the assembly that I think you guys want to watch a bit more Got to raise her up again up you go I need to take out the crankshaft and you go again yes I know it's obstructed because I'm there there you go uh, actually I want to take out the engine block before I do anything else there you go. that's the engine block out that's the car completely disassembled I'm gonna get to, back to the repair bench and just fix up what I can all right that's repairs completed now we get to go into part mo mount mode mount up the uh, reconditioned engine block we need an ignition coil that's something i can worry about in a minute the brake servo can go in the fuel filter probably gonna yeah yeah gonna need to buy one alternator can go in you can see the mess that this car actually is when once it's uh, disassembled the power steering pump and also go in like that um, I won't fit the radiator just now camshaft I'm gonna need to buy a new one so into the main shop camshaft and it's for a V8 overhead valve here we go cam gear I need to buy a new one because that's not good enough um, gear for V8 overhead valve buying these new parts is expensive yes but the um, the money that we're saving is going to pay for I need this anyway going to pay for the the cost of whatever we need to buy so the distributor rotor is good and the cap should be good as well perfect the clips are both perfect so the car now has an ignition uh, what else do we need to attach to the top end a fuel filter and ignition coil B which we now have so let's get a fuel filter uh, fuel filter 27 bucks not a big deal fuel filter can go in and yeah we're gonna have to raise it up again up it goes and in under we go because we now need to start mounting the we can mount in the suspension cross member for sure start mounting the crankshaft and associated parts like the crankshaft bearings the bearing caps need to go in just to hold the crank into place uh, there's the second one you can see this engine is very very shiny very new very shiny very beautiful flywheel okay so we're gonna actually need to just go to the gearbox shop here we're probably gonna need to buy one of everything so I'm just gonna keep that there for now and see how we do clutch plate is junked buy one of them 
The pressure plate is... I've got two and they're both junked. Brilliant! Wonderful! I'm probably going to need to buy a new clutch bearing as well. Let's see how we do here. Release bearing is junked. I figured as much. I shouldn't be surprised, and I am not. Release bearing's on, and now the gearbox can go on. 100% gearbox. Magnificent. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Eight pistons with rings. And just throw them in here. Two. Three. Four. To the people who think that I talk too much, I'll talk slower, but I'm not going to stop talking. I've decided. <laughs> um, if you watch a YouTube video, and you expect, especially on a channel that has, you know, whew, a thousand or so videos, where almost all of them are Let's Plays, and you expect them to be completely silent throughout, you have made a mistake. Um, you can criticize and complain all you like. Put the intake manifold in. I've decided this isn't getting supercharged. But the carbs can go back in. One and two. Air filter base is perfect. Air filter I'm probably gonna need. Yeah, air filter I need to buy. Around air filter. For a dual carb, I can go in and the cover can go on as well and kill my eyes with the bloom. What else can go in top end here? The timing chain needs replacing. So, timing chain. Get over at valve. I don't understand why the F variant has a different. Timing chain, but okay. Timing cover can go back on. I can't see a thing. Maybe I shouldn't have put the radiator back in this early. Water pump can go in. The. Ooh, there's a pulley down here that needs to go on. Crankshaft pulley. Uh, pulley. For a V8 overhead valve. Water pump pulley. Oop. No, that can come back off. Looks like I can buy a brand new one. There we go. And the serpentine belts. Yeah, gonna need a new one. Belt A for V8 over at valve and belt B for V8 over at valve. Oh. Wait, what? I bet I bought the wrong. Oh, that was a super chair. Yeah, because turning it on its side makes, suddenly makes it a new belt. I just noticed as well that the cap on the radiator is rusted. That shall not do. Can I repair the radiator cap? No. So the radiator cap can be replaced. I don't know why radiator seat cap is its own part, but it is. Much better. Just, yeah, that's just for looks, really. I mean, it costs nothing. It does nothing. It just looks nice when it's brand new. And uh, if I'm restoring this properly, 
it should look brand new. One minor criticism I have is I can't put racing stripes on this. I think the the Cobra looks absolutely perfect with um, with racing stripes. But that's just my own personal opinion. You know, I, I might be wrong. It looks nice in uh, red. I've got one in red. It's set over the shop or over in the garage. Um, I might just put racing slicks on this thing. I don't know why the zoom has forced itself to be... That's better. Now I don't feel like my head is forced against the side of the car. Which granted it will be in real life, but meh. Ignition wires for V8, please. Seeing as the spark plugs are in. Uh, how are the push rods? Okay, so oh dear. Push rods. Push. Oh, push rod. I'll need 16 of. Oh my god. 16 of these. And I'll check the rocker after the first push rod is in. So I'll use this as a test rocker. No. Need to buy 16 rocker arms as well. Which is a pain in the backside. Forgot to sign out of Steam as always. It seems to just be a thing that I do. I know that realistically not having 100% is fine. You know, it's not going to cause damage to the car, but... I kind of like having everything being 100%. I'm going to be honest. It just... If you're doing a restoration... You... And a rebuild... Especially in a car that I could have sold this off, you know, straight away and been fine. But on a car like this... Putting a nice rebuild in place... Is... Definitely, definitely the way to go. Um, I should mention I'm playing an update 1.1.3, I think. Um, so I need to get engine cover B. Or not engine, but um, cover B. Engine head cover B for a V8 over valve, please. Wrap that into place, and you can see that the uh, engine's definitely taking shape now. Well, the entire was it left bank of the engine is now together. Put the right bank together real quick, and uh, yeah, back to you guys when we got the right bank of the engine in. And with these eight bolts. 10 volts. I miscounted. That is the engine, or the top end of the engine at the very least. Um, rebuilt. So now, we can raise this up once again on the, the stand. And the ramp, or whatever you want to call it. And work on the bottom end. Down here, we've got the rod caps to worry about. So a lot of these should be at 100%. If not all of them, actually. Find out how many of the eight rod caps are at 100%. How many you'll have to buy. Place your bets. Or do some counting and figure it out for yourselves right now. Because I'm not going to count. I'm just going to run through them until we're not at 100% anymore. Although the 95, I think it's going to be one rod cap needed. Unless I had a, an inexplicable spare one. Did I miss a rod cap somewhere? It's letting me put the oil pan on, so I'm guessing not. Yeah, I don't have an oil pan for this car at the moment, so I need to get an oil pan. 
Prieto red valve, as well as an oil filter, or aviate overhead valve. And that should be the engine fully together. Yes, it is, including the start. We're wishing time. We we'll just we we'll just buy um, sixteen of them. I'll buy ten small ones. I know there won't be that many to put in, but just because they annoy me, I always buy too many. As we start building the uh, suspension back up. Okay, so the inner tie rods need to be replaced. That's fine, we'll just buy two of those. I won't be keeping this car, oddly enough. Um, I already have a... Uh, an AC Cobra in the parking lot, as I mentioned earlier. So, this one's gonna be sold off at the end of this video. We'll bring it for a test drive and we'll see how it donuts. But, uh, it will not be kept. And I do know that I need to rebuild the, um, the shock absorber as much as I can. In fact, I'll go over to the spring puller in a second and just rip it apart. Uh, okay, so I need to get some uh, ventilated brake discs. I'll get two of them. I'll probably need to get new pads and calipers as well. But we'll just be 100% sure of that. Pads, yep. Pads. I need two sets of these. How are the calipers looking? 100%. 100%. Fantastic. That's that side. Aha! Front wheel bearing. Or wheel hub bearing. Wheel hub bearing. Do these. Because I always forget them. These are the bane of my existence. We need to get two hub caps. And just mount up the sway bar as well. Uh, it's front sway bar. Sway bar. Bar B. Just need the one. Our front end link B, I'll need two of those. Uh, yeah, now I'll just go over to it's back here. Spring puller. Separate out these shocks. Let it do its thing. Separate out this shock. Can I repair parts of it? No. Oh, so this is kind of a waste of time. But it'll give me uh, components. So, in the suspension shop, it's a double wishbone shock. With the front shock absorber cap. And the front spring. Much like that. Just pull the spring in, take it out, and join up the second one. We can mount it up now on this side of the car. One. Oh, that's it in. 
Fantastic. Did I forget a rubber? Aha, I did forget a rubber bushing. This is why I hate rubber bushings. It's just they'll, they'll hide away. And you'll never see them, but they'll always be missing. So we're gonna get these in. Fantastic. And the inner tie rod can go in. Front steering knuckle can go in. Outer tie rod. Um, upper suspension arm. It's rubber bushings. I don't, Joe. I don't know if I've got enough rubber bushings. Bottom suspension arm. I do. Knuckle cover. Wheel hub. One, two, three. Wheel hub bearing can go in. Brake disc ventilated. Wheel hub cap. Brake pads. And a brake caliper. There we go. That's that side almost done, but it needs one more thing, which is actually two more things. So I think I forgot to put. The, yeah, I forgot to attach the sway bar. Uh, whoops. Sway bar front end link B on there. Oh, that's, there it is. And the shock absorber on there, like that. So that is that done. Rear suspension time, and uh, the rear drive axle is good. Just join up the gearbox to the rear drive axle. So now, in theory, this thing will run. If we were to start the engine, well, it wouldn't, because I don't have any oil in the engine. But in theory, it would be, it is now a running machine. The car, in theory, will have an en has an engine and a drive shaft, so... It would, in theory, spin the wheels, at least, or the gearbox, for a few minutes before the engine blew up. Engines aren't quite as volatile as people seem to like to think, but they do have a habit of um, not being very happy. Need two brake drums. It's kind of a shame you can't retrofit, retrofit ABS um, into something like this, but I can kind of see why. Uh, the rear shock absorber B times two, please. And that's that side of it together. Fuel tank. Need the one. I forgot to put the loose the um, loose spring bolts back on. Fuel pump is good. Yeah, I forgot to put the loose spring retainers on, didn't I? Retaining plate and the U bolts. Because otherwise, I just have a effectively a free floating <laughs> leaf spring. With nothing to hold it down. That's not a good situation to have in a car, is it? Just kind of a, a floating leaf spring. Leaf spring plate. Six bucks for that. Six bucks I didn't really need to spend, but oh well. How are the U bolts? Both are 100%. Fantastic. One. Two on a small rubber bushing. It would appear I bought far too many rubber bushings. There is an excess of bushing. Wheel hub can go on. Inexplicably, you can put the drum wheel sit and draw before the wheel hub. Uh, axle can go on. Brake shoes. Brake drums. So that is the car mostly together now. Um, maybe we can bring it, lower it down. Because it's time to start assembling the body again. Um, body assembly mode, right headlight, in case we need to get 
a... Uh, we'll worry about that in a minute. Hood is good. Mirrors. Left side is good. Left door is good. Trunk is good. You can see this thing just looks absolutely gorgeous when it's... John, let's... Okay. For some reason it's... Okay, so we need to get headlights and taillights. And windows. So... In the body shop... We need to get DC Typhoon... Window... 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 Headlight... Taillight... Headlight... Taillight... We can throw it all in here. Can you assemble mode? Give me assemble mode. You're in assemble mode. Okay. We'll swap out the steering wheel as well in a minute. I'm gonna put the same kind of. Uh, Oh. I actually need to get a front bumper as well. I don't... Something tells me these bumpers would be quite useless. But that is the body together. Now it's time to decide on the wheels. Uh, the rims are going to be Typhoon rims. So if I just scroll down. Typhoon rims. We're going to get them all... We're going to get... Two 18-inch rims for the rear, and two 15-inch rims for the front, and we're going to put, actually, the race tire B, we're going to get two 15, 165, 55, and for the rear, we get two, two fifty-five, sixty-fives. And this should give it a nice kind of a squat look. We're gonna repaint it as well into. Actually, it kind of looks nice and aggressive in black. I don't know if I want to repaint it. Hmm. Um. Where is? Rim Typhoon 18 inch. Yes, please. So that's on the. Whoa, that's gonna look aggressive. That's the rear tire. And we're gonna do the same again. And this one. Yes. We're gonna balance out the Typhoon rim. Take that off. We're gonna install the 15 inch rims on the front now. That's gonna look really aggressive, actually. I think I might have gone a bit too far with the um, the squatting. It might look like a bit of a donk. Um, I may regret this. Let's balance out the other 18-inch rim first. <laughs> I may re I may well regret this. Let's see how the rear rim looks. That fills up almost all of the wheel well. Oh dear. Let's start balancing up the 15-inch rims. That takes up almost all the wheel well. That's like super aggressive. I mean, it looks. That looks really. I may have gone over the top. <laughs> Front tires 
look dinky. But that's dinky in comparison to the the stonking great rear tires. It's it's definitely gonna squat forward, that much is for sure. How badly is it gonna I've definitely mismatched. It's gonna have like no grip on the front as well. Like the rear tires are nice and wide, so they look nice and aggressive. And then you've got these dinky tiny front wheels on. Oh dear. We'll bring it on the test track and see how it drives at least. I mean. It's definitely going to be a squat car. I'm going to... Do you know, I am actually going to bring it over to the paint shop. Um, because I've just thought of a really nice paint job this thing can have. Um, that'll make it just look that mi bit more aggressive. So let's go for a pearlescent. Actually, would a chameleon black be nicer? Now, pearlescent black. And we'll just give it. Just want to see where I'm going here with this. Let's give it a very light touch of blue. So let's make it almost a midnight blue, like that. Oh, that is nice. Kind of black on blue. That looks nice. Let's take this thing out on the test track, see how it performs. Probably not very well. No oil in the engine. I forgot to put oil in the engine. Why didn't anybody remind me to put oil in the engine? You guys should have reminded me to put oil in the engine. I'm gonna do it in the paint shop because I can. Oil into the engine. There we go. We'll actually bring this out to garage entrance B because I need to take a. Actually, yeah, let's just take it straight onto the test track. DC Typhoon. Well, I'm out here, I'll be taking a thumbnail, so there will be a cut at some point. Uh, probably when I'm doing donuts. It sounds aggressive for sure. And it almost does a wheelie immediately. Yeah, it's got no. Front, it's got almost no front grip. It's got tons of grip in the rear, but the. Uh, the steering isn't there. This is definitely a dragster. So we'll try and get this thing... I say try. We'll get this thing doing donuts. Uh, right about now. Don't think there's any try with this. Just spin her out. And she should start doing donuts of her own accord in a second. is definitely able to do a good drift. The thing about this, and car mechanic in general, is I've noticed this, is once you get, you can hold a drift and you can get a good angle, but as soon as you go past a certain angle, it just, the car decides to, to whip around on you immediately. Which is a bit of a shame, because this the, the smoke effects are amazing. There we go, this is sort of a donut. So I'm gonna get. Oh. Gotta get the car spinning up over here. If I. Visible, please. And yes, this is a static cam that I'm controlling with my mouse. Uh oh. 
This is the downside of it. Is if you gotta go thumbnail, I'm gonna be here for a few minutes, so I'm gonna cut this nonsense out and uh, give you the rest of the test track when I'm, I'm done. Let's get the rest of this test track done. So over suspension test, everything should be 100%. Just in case, showing off the car in motion and try not to destroy it. One thing's for sure, the brakes on this thing definitely work. Um, I guess all I really have to do is sell this beautiful midnight blue style. Um, AC Cobra in what can only amount to a drag spec. Which is worth $58,296. Global body condition 77%. Something on here isn't... Oh, I forgot the interior. Never mind, we need to put an interior together. Um, so let's just get... Do you know what? Um, seat. Give it a bit of luxury. A bit of luxury. That looks like an office chair. I don't want that. I want something that's kind of racy but luxurious. Like that's from the M3. That probably wouldn't fit. But if I go to like see. Like something like this in leather. It's a black car, so I think a black leather seat would be nice. If we go to wheel. I, want, I like the Typhoon wheel. I think it could be improved upon. And I think the improvement would be... I kind of think the improvement would be this, steering wheel number three. So let's go into interior assemble mode, pop in our racing seats and the new steering wheel. Have a look at what we've produced. That is luxurious. It's now worth $63,596 straight into our bank account. Away goes the AC Cobra slash DC Typhoon. I'll leave you by saying I've been Rainbow Dave. You've been watching Car Mechanic Simulator 2018. Hope you enjoyed this restoration of the DC Typhoon slash AC Cobra or Shelby Cobra. I did. I know I did. But, uh,. Yeah, that was enjoyable. 63 grand into the bank account, thank you very much. Until next time, stay safe, and goodbye.